Choose joy, choose good habits, and stick with it. Create your own happiness. Sounds maybe kind of fake, but it's true. Create your own happiness. Stick with the movement. Stick with your yoga and do what is right for you. Don't hurt your body. Do what's right in your body and just press on. And that's what we're doing today. I know it might be a little bit wonky, but we're just going to press on, right? It's not going to stop us because nothing's going to stop us from doing our yoga. Maybe this is a happy hour for you, our Monday practice where we increase flexibility and mobility, or maybe it's a happy 10 minutes. Stick with that it however long is right for you. But don't hurt. If something hurts, back out of it. Don't do it. Take it to a lesser percentage. Just move. That's your pep talk for today. I'm Jan. This is 316 Yoga. This is where you practice from home every single day, live, start to finish, mistakes and all that stuff. No big deal, right? I mean, live the real life. Word I'd like you to think about today. Actually, I guess it's four words and it's get in the game. You gotta play to win. Remember that lottery slogan? You gotta play to win. Get moving. Get started today. Just do it. Move, be active, and live. Live. Okay, all right, let's do it. Stress number on a scale of one to five, scale of one to ten, what's going on in your body? How are you feeling now? Pick a number and lock it in. Have your props nearby. Today we are going to use the strap. So if you have that or you don't have one, get a belt to your robe, a jump rope, a dog leash, get a strap. Get a strap because we're going to use it and I think you're going to like it. A hand towel and an eye shade. Hand towel can be slipped under your knee to make it lunge more comfortable, or it can be used in your final shavasana to block out the light. Closing your eyes is nice. Blocking out the light with an eye shade or a towel is an extra special treat. Get that too for yourself in the Two yoga blocks. Love them. And some water. Really love that. We all have to drink more water, don't we? You know you do. Drink more water. It'll make your joints feel better, make your organs uh, more efficiently. Um, operate and just, just drink more water. It makes your skin look better. All right, that's it. That's your pep talk. Come on up to standing. Let's do our little warm up and bring your strap. Let's start with the strap. And if you don't have a strap, no big deal. You can do it. You can do all of this. Just move. All right, come on up to standing. I am going to hold my strap. We're not over quite yet. Lift your arms on up to an extended mountain pose. Lift, breathe, stretch. Your feet are firmly rooted into your mat. Fingers are lifted to the sky. Take a deep breath in through your nose. <sighs> and a big sighing breath out through your mouth. When you sigh out, let your shoulders soften. Breathe. Big breath in. <sighs> and big breath out. Let's find your strap. Find your strap. Don't bonk yourself with the buckle. And create a big Y in your arms. A big Y. Lift. Just lift. Breathe. Pull the strap to the sides of the room. Let's do a little bit of soul. All right, what do I mean by that? I'm talking about the soles of your feet. Lift on up, bring your heels behind your toes. Just lift and lower. Soul searching. We all need a little bit of both of those kinds of soul searching, don't we? All right, look up to where the ceiling and the wall meet. And just come on up onto your toes. Pull the strap, be nice and strong. And breathe. Just relax. And move. So what you're doing here, you're strong. today. Lift and lower. Breathe. Let it feel super good. Chest is lifted. Gaze is up to where the ceiling and the wall meet. Breathe. And then maybe once or 
place. Come down to your heels and lift your toes up. Just breathe. Be happy for movement. Breathe. Finish up. Plant the soles of your feet on the ground and start to sway from side to side. Breathe. Breathe. Sway from side to side. And uh, like your arms are like in a big letter Y, like when we do that YMCA pose. But you're getting that lateral flexion of your spine, the sideways movement of the spine. Let it feel wonderful. Let it feel super good for you. I don't know how far you take it. You take it as far as feels good for you today. Every day is different. All right, come back up to stand. Crown of the head up toward the sky. Let's do some uh, uh, arm circle like movements. We don't have the straps. You can do giant arm circles. I'm going to squat. And as I squat, bend to the knees, bring the straps. Maybe it touches the knees. Come on back up to standing and then bring the strap behind you. Bring it back behind and you take it as far as is right for you. Maybe you can bring it all the way down to your waist. Just find your shoulder mobility. Maybe increase the spread in the arms. As the strap comes down, knees bend, strap comes up, you look up, maybe take the strap back even farther. Find good mobility in your shoulders. You know what feels right for you. Maybe you don't take it very far. That's okay. You're still moving, and that's really important. That's what we're after. Ah, breathe. Every day our practices are different. I've told you that before, and I'll tell you it every single day. Every day our practices are different. We go from a yin yoga to a vinyasa yoga to restorative to Fridays, we do yoga plus. That incorporates hand weights, Pilates, and bar movements as well as our yoga. Oh, just breathe, just move, be happy with what you got. How are your knees feeling? All right, let's finish up. Bring your arms down by your sides. Maybe hold on to your strap. Yeah, and or decrease the distance between the hands. Shoulders are back and down and just sway from side to side. Look over one shoulder, then the other, and just pull on your strap a little bit. A lot of times we do that big coat swing where the arms are hanging freely, but now we've got our arms under tension. And <sighs> you know, with anything, you gotta begin with an end in mind. You gotta think far ahead. Where do you want to be? Where do you want to go? You got to think far ahead because that far ahead is going to be here in a snap. Do you want to be still walking with your friends? Do you still want to be playing pickleball or golf a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now? The answer is yes and the answer is yes. You got to work on it today. You've got to begin with an end in mind. All right, so sway from side to side. Let's finish up. You can remove the strap now, let it go. Bring your hands to your low back, fingers down, elbows toward your spine, look up to where the ceiling and the wall meet. Maybe look overhead. As you look overhead, don't think about, oh, bending back, bending back. Think about your chest, your whole torso lifting up to the sky. <sighs> Breathe. Now exhale and hinge forward. So you're just gonna fold in half. Let your arms hang heavy. Look to your ankles. To your knees or up towards your belly button. A little bend in your knees feels good. Big breath in. <sighs> Big breath out. Decompress your low back. Now look at your feet. Toe heel your feet hip width distance apart. That's two fist widths. Place your two fists in between your feet and see where they are. Now bend your elbows and bring your hands to opposite elbow creases. Crown of the head is still hanging low. Little bend in your knees might feel terrific and then sway from side to side. All right, your yoga may look different from mine, and that's a-okay. As long as it is feeling good, that's what we're after. After the feeling, the sensation in the body, and everybody's looks different. Breathe deeply, let it go. Ragdoll feels wonderful, I hope. If it doesn't feel wonderful, make it feel wonderful. And maybe that making it feel wonderful is totally backing out and not doing it at all. All right, let's finish up. Come back to the midline of your body and take a breath or two here. Big breath in through the nose. Oh, relax and 
enjoy. Body, enjoy this feeling. Let your crown of your head be heavy as you stretch out and decompress your low back. Big breath in and big breath out. We don't have to rush and hurry. Now you can keep your arms right where they are, or if you wanna feel more stable, you can bring your fingertips to the earth. Lift your toes up and shift the weight a little bit back into your heels. Just kind of experiment and feel your confidence here. Wiggle the toes, a little more weight back in the feet. Breathe, hands, wherever feels right for you. And then finish, place the soles of your feet on your mat and then bend your knees. Come on down, let's do child's pose. All right. Your child's pose, you know how to do this. There's two primary ways to do it. A wide-legged child's pose or a classic child's pose. You can use a block to bring the ground up to you. Knees can be together, big toes can be touching, hips can go back toward your heels. I said toward your heels, not necessarily seated on your heels. You know, wherever is right for you. Place your head, their forehead, onto the block if you like, or bring it down to the ground. Arms long, down by your sides, palms face up. You feel nice and tight and compact here. Let your shoulders relax away from your ears as your fingertips reach to the bottom of your mat in your classic child's pose. The other option I mentioned is spreading the knees wide. Big toes are still touching, hips still go back toward your heels, and your hands reach long to the top of the mat. You're getting back into your shoulders. Now, if you usually don't do this pose, we warmed them up pretty well with that strap today. Maybe you might want to try it. Just don't be afraid to try. And if it isn't right, back out of it. Maybe bring your to your arms down by your sides. There's no rules. You do what is right for you. Stretch it out. Big breath in. And a big breath out through your mouth. Stretch, reach, you've got it. Maybe you're reaching to the top of the mat. Maybe you're reaching to the bottom of the mat. Close your lips if you like and breathe in and out of your nose. You got it, you're moving, let's get in the game. All right, press on back up to a neutral tabletop position. Knees under your hips, wrists under your shoulders. Breathe, push the earth away. And now let's flip our hands, flip our hands so our fingers are back towards our knees. So your forearm is shining forward. Wiggle your hips from right to left and bring them back more towards your heels. So feel this good stretch in the front of your arms, in your forearm. Fingers spread wide, breathe, move your hips from side to side, hips back towards your heels. Maybe take your hips back even farther and feel the good stretch in your forearms. Maybe stretch it back even farther and feel the stretch in your fingers as your palm comes up a little bit. Whatever feels good, take a few breaths here and move and stretch out the forearm. Whew. Forearms don't get enough of a stretch. We're on our computers too much and don't bend this way very often. Let it feel super good. All right. When you're ready, let's bring our hands back to a natural position. Maybe wiggle your fingers like you're playing a piano. That sounds like more fun than working on a computer. All right. Wiggle your wrists. Place your hands down. Bring your hips back to your heels. Tuck your toes towards your shins. Where am I going? I'm going to toes pose. You come too if you like. All right. So have a seat back on your heels. You could have a seat on your block. Oh, stretch out our foundation. We stretched out our forearms by pulling the arms, the hands back towards the elbows on our mat. Now we're working on the feet back again to our foundation. All right, hope you're hearing me well. Life is good. Work through problems, work through problems, right? Don't quit, don't give up, work through the problems. All right, if this hurts, come out of it. You know, toes pose is intense. You're stretching the fascia in your feet. Kind of wiggle and remember to include that little baby toe too. Hands can be on your thighs or at prayer center. Take a deep breath in and a deep shoulder softening breath out. All right, the key is just move, move. We all know we got to move more. We've got to do, we've just got to do, we've got to enjoy. That's the big thing. And don't fall into the day-to-day -day oblivion of directionlessness. Is that a word? You know, set a goal to move, to do, to enjoy, and work every day toward that goal. Take a deep breath in. 
and a shoulder softening breath out. How do your toes feel? Ooh, it's intense, isn't it? But it feels good. I hope it feels good. If it hurts, you know, take the weight off of them a little bit, back out of it. Now we're gonna do a counter pose to this. It is called an ankle pose. All right, let's come on out of it. Remove the block if you used it. Place the tops of your feet on your mat. Maybe grab the second block, because they're kind of nice to bring the ground up to you, and come to sit back on the tops of your feet. Press the tops of your feet into your mat. Press your hands into the blocks, and then lift your knees on up. Keep your knees together, though, and so your knees are, you know, they're lifted. You're back on the tops of your feet, stretching out your ankles. This is one of my favorite poses that we do. All right, lengthen up to the crown of your head. Let the knees go higher. Press into your blocks. If you don't have the blocks, press into the earth. You got little kickstand hands here. Breathe. Take it back as far as feels right for you. This is the counter pose to your toes pose. So you're stretching your ankle in all different directions. And it will help you, it'll help you, it'll strengthen your ankles and it'll help you keep you, prevent you, hopefully, from falling. You can catch yourself more quickly if your ankles are strong. Falls are bad. Oh, I've had several friends fall recently and not, not good. Breathe, breathe. That's the big thing, breathe through it. And let's finish. All right, come back to your neutral tabletop. In your neutral tabletop, lift your feet up, circle your ankles, squeeze and scrunch your toes, tap your feet out, just kind of get circulation back going there. That's an intense pose, but it really has super, super benefits. All right, cat cows next, back to your spine. You're in a neutral tabletop, push the earth away. Tops of the feet are pressed into the mat. You can feel your core engage. Lengthen through the crown of your head. Exhale, tuck your chin to your chest and your tailbone under, breathe. As you take an inhale, do just the opposite. Crown of your head lifts and your tailbone lifts. So do some cat cows here. Remember, you're pushing into the earth. You're arching your back like a Halloween cat. You're still pushing really hard into the earth and you're coming into cow. So you think of your spine, the way it's curving. It's curving like the letter C in cow and curving like the letter C in cat. Breathe. Breathe through it. Move your spine. Tuck your tailbone under. Think of your navel touching your spine. Really arch your back. And then do your cow. Oh, this feels so great. So important. That's your cat cow. Let's do a bird dog pose. All right, bird dog pose. Let's do it a little faster today. Let's begin by lifting your right leg up, knee to hip height. Extend your right leg long. Right hip, let it come down a little bit so your right hip and your left hip are equal distant to your mat. Press hard into your hands, drive your heel toward the back of the room, and then lift your left arm up and reach. Left arm comes down, right knee comes down, other side. Lift the left leg, extend the left leg, right arm reaches and really far to the top of your mat. Hands come down, knee comes down, do it again on the other side. Work through it, really take a full stretch, don't linger, reach, stretch, and switch sides. Right, left, left, right, move. Move, like a bird dog pointing, right? Breathe. Right, left, left, right. Find your balance. You're strong, you've got this. Repetition is the key. And you know, maybe bird dog in the past, when we hold it longer, you know, they don't feel so stable. But you can do it. Reach, stretch. The more you do it, the more it becomes habit for you. Right? You can do this. Stretch, reach, bird dog pose. Let's finish up. Finish up. Let's do a wide-legged child's pose. Spread your knees wide, just like earlier. Big toes touch, hips back towards your heels. Reach your arms long to the top of the mat. Even if you did a classic child's pose last time, try this one on for size. Inhale, exhale. Mm, that bird dog got my heart rate up. How about you? Breathe. Breathe. Maybe spread your knees a little wider. Try to keep your big toes together. Push into your mat like you're trying to make the mat a couple inches bigger, stretching it out. Push into your palms, reach your fingertips toward the top of your mat. Breathe. We're gonna do plank next, and let me tell you about it for a second. So stay here in your wide-legged child's pose. Reach, stretch, and enjoy this. For plank, we usually set a one-minute plank a one minute timer. And that is only to allow you to keep track of 
how long you're doing your plank if you want to. It'll allow you to measure your progress, but you don't have to time it. You don't have to pay attention to it at all. You take the variation of plank that you like. One of the variations of plank starts kind of like right where we are here. So let's press on up. You can have your arms, bring them in a little bit more, knees spread wide, shifting your weight more forward, bringing the shoulders over the wrists. You could stay right here in this frog-like plank. Totally good, totally fine. You can bring your knees in a little bit more, adjust them to what feels good for you. You could drop down to your forearms. Forearms can be parallel to each other. Bring your knees back a little bit, shifting your weight forward so your elbows are underneath your shoulders. And hold here, push into the earth so you feel your core engage. You could take a high plank for a high plank. Again, shoulders over wrists for stability. Legs can be long, pressing into the balls of your feet and press on up and hold. Stay strong as you strongly press the earth away. Today, I'm going to take a forearm plank, a dolphin plank. Choose the type of plank that you want. Come on down, get ready, position yourself into your plank. All right, I'm gonna be in the dolphin plank. Again, elbows under shoulders. Toes tucked in, and then I'm gonna press on up, and let's start the timer now. All right, so pressing into the mat, hands spread wide. Whichever variation you're in, take the breaks you need. Find length from your heels all the way through the crown of your head. We are 10 seconds in. If today's plank is 10 seconds long for you, good on you. Just hold it. You know, everybody wants a quick fix, don't we? Those things on the internet that say flat abs in three days or do this in one hour. You know, come on, give me a break. All right, we are about halfway there. You know, and everybody wants a quick fix, but it doesn't happen. Everybody wants radical changes really fast, but it doesn't work. What does work is small change, small changes, building habits. We have 20 seconds to go. Come on, you can do it. Build good habits, step by step, little by little. These little changes lead to remarkable results. Stick with it, hold on. We've got 10 seconds to go. Push the earth away, one more push. You can do anything for 10 seconds. You can do anything for five, four, three, two, one, and done. Come down to your knees, all right? You did it. Whichever variation of plank you did, awesome. Just try. Remember, it doesn't happen overnight. That's BS. It doesn't happen overnight. You've got to stick with it and do. All right, I'm going to grab a drink and we're going to do some other core stuff. All right, you got it. Strap. Let's have it nearby because we're going to use it for boat pose today. Normal stuff we do, Supta Baddha Konasana sit-ups. Let's begin with those. You could, if you want. You don't have to, you don't have to do anything. You don't want to, because you're an adult. <laughs> All right, take the block, place it at the bottom of your mat. If you want, place the soles of your, uh, place the pinky edge side of your foot on the block, bring the soles of your feet together. All right, you don't have to use the block at all. Hands to prayer center, always a good place to be, lengthen up. Exhale, come to recline. As you come to recline, whew, take it at one consistent speed if you can. Maybe bring the block or your heels up closer to your groin. Fingertips, fingers are bent at, lightly at your temples. Elbows open wide. <sighs> Exhale the air out of your lungs. <sighs> Breathe out of your mouth for a little bit here. And when you're ready on your next exhale, let your chin lift up to the sky. And as you inhale, come on down. So little lifts, little lowers at your pace. Up on the exhale, because that gives you a little extra up because you're tucking your navel to your spine. Lift a little higher. Think of your chin going up to your sky. Don't even look at your feet or your knees. Come on back down as you inhale. Lift and lower to your pace however you like. The legs can be elevated or not. No hard, fast rules here. You've got it. Breathe. <sighs> Keep going. You can do it. Strong core. Finish now, come on down, elbows open wide. Bring your knees to touch, scoot the block aside. Soles of your feet can be on your mat. Let's do bicycle your way. I'll show you three ways you can do it, but get started doing what you like. Fingers lightly at the temples. Soles of the feet down. When you're ready, you can lift up through the chest. Bring opposite elbow toward opposite knee with little twists. If you would like to ride a recumbent bike, bring your shoulders down. Lift your legs up, knees over your hips, shins parallel to the sky, toes drawn towards your shins, fingers at your temples, and then drive through your heels. 
drive through your heels as if you're riding a recumbent bike. Put it all together. Peel your shoulders up if you want. Elbow toward opposite knee as you drive through each heel. One leg extends, the other's drawing close. Breathe. Another option. So many choices. Straighten your legs and scissor kick them. Breathe. 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 And then finish. Legs go long. Arms go high overhead. Stick pose. Stretch it out. Palms touch. Fingers reach toward the top of the room. Toes point to the bottom of the room. <sighs> Stick pose. Lengthen in the spine, just like you did in bird dog. Find length in your spine. Decompression. Started off with our ragdoll pose. Actually, it started off with our extended mountain pose. Ragdoll, you used gravity to help breathe. All right, find your strap. Hopefully it's close by. Let's do boat pose with the strap today. And don't, you know, you do it your way, but don't think, oh, I don't want to use the strap. I can do it without the strap. Because yes, you can, and we'll do that tomorrow. But it's just good to take different variations. Center of the strap, under the soles of your feet. Elbows hugged in, hold onto the straps like you're riding a horse. We'll let the heels come down and slowly roll on up. Take it with control. Come on up. Heels are lifted, heels are driving toward the front of the room, elbows are hugged in, your back is flat. Sit back as if you were in a recliner and just find your peace here, find your inner balance. Breathe and find your physical balance too. You've got it, hopefully this pose feels a little fun for you. Elbows are hugged in, reach. Maybe lean back a little bit more, let that be your challenge in this pose today. Lean back a little bit more. Drive through your heels. Feel your belly engage and keep your chest lifted in your boat pose. Ah, breathe. Hold. You got it. Now just think about what you're doing. Imagine what you're becoming and know that, hey, you're doing it. You are doing it and you are becoming what you want to be. Lift through the chest. Be proud of yourself and put a smile on your face. Find joy in your heart because you're doing it. You are becoming what you want to be. All right. Finish. Feet come down. Oh, feet come down. Heels are down. Walk your hands on both straps toward your feet and just hinge forward a little bit. Maybe a bend in your knees. Ah, look to your knees. Breathe. So, you know, we do that forward fold pose. We began in our warm up doing a forward fold where you just kind of fold in half. That's what you're doing here. Breathe. As you inhale, you'll notice that your chest kind of lifts up because your belly's filling up. And then exhale it out. <sighs> exhale it out and let your belly hollow out as you come closer toward your knees. <sighs> Inhale, lengthen. <sighs> exhale, let it go. All right, let's finish. Remove your strap. <laughs> Not too bad, right? Let's come on up and do some standing poses. All right, so you can crisscross at your ankles. Hands come down to your mat. Send your legs high. Down dog. Okay, downward facing dog. We do this a lot and we'll do it a lot tomorrow in our vinyasa practice. Here's what you wanna do. Soles of your feet, feet are, heels are slightly lifted. You're on the balls of your feet. Your feet are hip width distance apart. Now look to your hands that are shoulder width distance apart. Press hard into the earth. One of my favorite cues is to say, imagine a string on your tailbone, lifting your tailbone up to the sky. Crown of your head is hanging toward the earth. Look back to your knees or up towards your belly button and shake your neck. Push hard into the earth. Your heels are lifted. Remember that? Start to pedal them out, bringing one heel closer to the earth than the other. Breathe. Put a bend in that one knee as you come up onto the ball of one foot while the other's calf is stretching out. So walk the dog is fun to say. Stretch out your calves, but don't forget to push into your hands. And as you're ready, let's finish up. Still your body, tailbone to the sky. Your body looks like an inverted V. Walk your feet to meet your hands or your hands to meet your feet. Inhale, arms sweep up to the side of your room. Roll your spine on up. Come on up to an extended mountain pose. Lift up here. Ah, let's do tree. All right, hands to prayer center and lots of ways you can do it. You know, kick up the practice a little bit for you if you want. You could stand on a block. I'm going to start with my left foot as my foundation. Maybe you stand on the block to challenge yourself a little bit more. Always good to challenge ourselves. If you don't want to do it, 
don't do it. Have a chair nearby and find balance there. I'm gonna root into my left foot, hands to prayer center. Maybe take the weight out of your right foot. Maybe kickstand it a little bit. Bring it into the inner right thigh or high up on to the thigh or the calf or the thigh, whatever. But just don't put the foot onto your knee. Knees aren't meant to bend sideways. Look up to where the ceiling and the wall meet. Grow your branches if you like. Maybe one hand is on a chair for balance or maybe you got one hand on the wall. It's all good. Drive the outside of the right knee toward the back of the room. You're looking up to where the ceiling and the wall meet. Breathe. Finish, hands to prayer center. Guide the knee to the front of the room, plant the right foot on the floor. Breathe, both feet are beside each other. Now you could root the right foot into the block. Hold on, get your balance here, no sweat. Maybe you still use the chair while getting used to standing on the block. No big deal, it's just a challenge, kind of a mental challenge more than anything else. Bring the sole of the left foot up into the calf or high onto the thigh, just not on the knee. Hands back to prayer center. Shoulders are over your hips. Look up to where the ceiling and the wall meet. If you like, you can grow your branches. You don't have to. Sway them if you like. Breathe, focus, you're strong. Do this when you brush your teeth. Go into tree pose in the legs. Why not? Squeeze your yoga into your everyday life. Bring your hands back to prayer center. Guide the left knee to the front of the room and let both feet meet on the mat. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out as you soften in the shoulders. Eyes can be closed. Just kind of regroup and get ready for a fresh beginning in your you will look taller pose. All right, lift your arms on up. Y them out like a big letter Y. Backs of your hands pressed to the back of the room. Your body looks like the letter Y for you. Now let's do the letter will. Bring, 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 bring your elbows down. Your arms are like a big letter W. Press the backs of your hands to the back of the room. Ooh, feel the opening through the chest. Hold it here, breathe. You will. Let's do two L's, a forward L and a backward L. Hug your elbows in. Breathe, two L's here for the word look. Last letter in this little sentence, T. Bring your body to the letter T shape. Pulse the backs of your hands to the back of the room. You will look taller. Let's do it again, a big letter Y. Press the backs of your hands to the back of the room. That's the ticket. You, big letter W, same thing. Elbows go down, but the backs of the hands squeeze to the back of the room. L for look, <clears throat> T for taller, and pulse. That always feels nice. One more big Y, one more big W. One more big L, two big L's actually, and T. T for taller, pulse the backs of the hands to the back of the room. Now let your arms float down by your side. Eyes are closed, nice good posture, nice straight posture. Shoulders aren't forward, shoulders are back and down. Hands are down by your sides, they're like they're weighted. Chin is slightly tucked, ears are back, shoulders over the hips. Nice good posture with your you will look taller pose. All right, Pasarita Padahastasana. Let's bring the block in front of us and let's spread our legs nice and wide. With your legs spread wide, pinky edges of your feet toward the sides of your mat. T out your arms, lengthen up through the crown of your head. And maybe sigh it out, let it go. All right, think about this. Outcome is just a point along the spectrum of repetition. That's a good one, isn't it? All right, hinge forward, keeping your back nice and flat. Outcome is just a point along the spectrum of repetition. Keep at it and you'll get the outcome you want. Reach through your fingers, fold forward, look between your legs. Once you get down here, reach your hands towards your calves, hold on to your calves, elbows are hugged in, fold even more forward, look back through your legs, breathe. All right, something a little different. Remember your block? You brought it to the front of your mat so you can kind of put your hands on it. Maybe scoot it more forward, placing your hands on it. You don't have a block, just place your hands on the ground. All right, I'm gonna hold onto the block and I'm gonna scoot it pretty far forward so my uh, arms are straight. Then I'm gonna pop on up to my balls of my feet, push the block a little more forward and I'm just gonna build some confidence here. Breathe, maybe press on up to the balls of your feet, scoot the block a little more forward. Breathe and hold right here. 
Plant the soles of your feet on your mat. Scoot the block back a little bit. Now bring the weight into your heels. You're pressing into the earth or into the block, whichever feels comfortable and gives you confidence. Lift your toes up, give them a wiggle, and push more weight back into your heels. Breathe. Breathe in, breathe out. Solidly plant your soles of your feet on your mat. Now this block, you can take it and bring it in closer. Now rest the top of your forehead on it. Now you can bring the block to one of its many possible heights, whatever feels right for you today. Maybe wiggle your legs a little further apart, place, you know, not quite the crown of your head, just kind of the top of your forehead on the block. Walk your arms forward, hold here, and maybe hinge a little more forward and breathe. Maybe place the sole of your foot back down and place more weight into your heels and lift your toes up and push into the earth. Head comes off the block. Breathe and just kind of play with it a little bit. Finding your balance, knowing the block is here. <sighs> Breathe. A little bit of confidence for maybe doing a handstand later. Not today, I promise. Hinge forward. Crown of the head maybe on the block. And then finish. Place the soles of your feet down. Find the block again if you like, or just walk your hands all the way out as far as feels good for you in front of you, with the block or without. <sighs> Tailbone to the sky, breathe. Then let's finish. Walk your hands back. Block, you can put it to the side. Walk your hands back, heels in a little bit. Capture the backs of your calves. One more big fold forward. Tee out your arms, palms face down. Come on up to standing. Woo! Arms lift high up to the sky. Wiggle your hips, you got it. Let's do horse, hands to prayer center. Heels come in slightly, toes point out. Kind of a head rush. Hopefully it feels good. Get the blood going to your head so you can think good thoughts. Think joyous thoughts. All right, put a bend in your knees. Drive the outside of your knees to the back of the room. <sighs> Hands at prayer center, lengthen up through your spine. <sighs> Don't you just feel good here? Don't you just feel good? Sink a little bit lower. Maybe pop on up to the balls of your feet. Hold here. <sighs> Start to pedal your heels, one down, then the other. <sighs> so you're in like a wide squat doing your horse pose. One heel comes down, then the other. Alternate. Still your heels, plant the soles of your feet on the ground, sink lower and hold. Little teeny pulses up and down. <sighs> Breathe in your horse pose. Finish up, straighten through the legs, come into a big letter X. Big letter X and breathe. Five-pointed star. Wiggle your hips. Look up. Breathe. Drive the backs of your hands to the back of the room. Feels pretty good. Bring your palms together to touch overhead. Bring one foot to meet the other. Let's fold forward. Hands through. Prayer center. Fold forward. Look back to your knees. Big inhale and a big exhale. Roll your spine up one vertebra at a time. Hands back to prayer center. Take a big step out with your right foot. Big step out with your right foot, bring your hands to your hips. Let's take a different variation of warrior three. All 10 toes are pointing forward. Lift the weight out of your back left heel. Put a little bend in your right knee. Lengthen up through the crown of your head, your hands are on your hips. Send the weight into your right leg. Left leg lifts a little bit or a lot. Hands can be on your hips. Little bend in your right knee, lift the left leg up nice and straight. Maybe hands stay on your hips, or maybe you let the arms go parallel to each other and reach to the front of your room. Breathe. Hands back to your hips. Left foot meets right. Straighten up. Hands are still on your hips. Breathe. Take a big step back with your right foot. Big step back with the right foot. Let the weight come out of the right heel. Let the weight hinge forward into the left leg. Just going to do the other side. All right. Little bend in your left knee. Maybe little bit of weight out of the back right foot. Maybe not much at all. Breathe here. Maybe you hinge more forward. Bringing your torso parallel to the earth. Little bend in your standing left leg. Right leg lifts. Arms can reach to the front of your room. Breathe, hold, you got it, you're strong. 
hands back to your hips with control, right foot meets left, you did it. There's your warrior three. When you're ready, arms lift high to the sky. Breathe, stretch it out. Exhale, hands to prayer center, fold forward. <sighs> Inhale, halfway lift, hands to your shins, lengthen through your spine. Exhale, plant your hands, come down to your knees. Find your two blocks, let's do a lunge. Right leg comes forward, knee over ankle. Blocks at your side, push into them as they bring the ground up to you. Left leg goes long and straight on your mat. Here's where you could use your towel, you could slip it under your knee. Breathe. <sighs> Maybe press up to the fingertips. Maybe arms lift to the sky. Breathe. Look forward. Look up to where the ceiling and the sky meet. Maybe take a little back bend as you look up to the sky. Hands, fingers go back up to the sky. Exhale. Hands come back to prayer center. Your left hand, place it inside your right foot. Let the right arm go high to the sky. Twist and look up to your hand. You're stable here. You've got balance in your hand. Come back slowly to the midline of your body. Hands to prayer center. Maybe reintroduce the blocks. Bring them back to your sides. Start to surf it out. All you do is straighten the right leg and then bend the right leg. Breathe. You don't have to take it very far. How far do you want to take it? Just bend the knee. Straighten the leg. Bend the knee. Send the knee forward to the ankle. It's okay here. Maybe you walk it back all the way to your bottom is seated on your heels. Walk it forward with the blocks. Back and forth. Your pace. Just take it a few times. Maybe you really appreciate that towel under your left knee now. You can do it with the blocks or without the blocks. Just move. Your core is strong. Trust yourself. A few times here. We don't always do this many reps. But just get confident in the flow of the body's movement. All right, let's finish. Come back to standing on your knee. Let's switch it out and do the other side. Knees meet on the mat. Left knee comes forward. Left knee over left ankle. Press into your blocks. Send your right leg long. Stretch it out here. Breathe. <sighs> Press on up. Maybe shoulders over the hips. Maybe arms go high. Maybe you look toward the ceiling and the wall meet or overhead and take a little back bend. Hands back to prayer center. Big breath in, big breath out. Right hand, bring the right hand inside the left foot. So the left foot, right hand are right beside each other. Lift your left arm up to the sky, look up. Breathe. Slowly come back to that starting position. Left hand on the block, reintroduce your right block and start to surf. Straighten the knee, then bend the knee. Straighten and bend. Did you move the towel under the other knee? Oh, breathe. How does it feel? Let the knee come forward to the ankle. Totally okay here. You're not stressing it too much. Good. Breathe. Maybe hips go back to your right heel. Maybe you walk it forward with the blocks. <sighs> Maybe you've decided today I'm not going to use the blocks. My core is strong. I did lots of planking. I can do this. I'm gonna rock back and forth, using my core to pull me up. Breathe. It's kind of like doing happy baby. You know, the first pose is always the hardest, but once you do it, you kind of get into it, right? All right, when you're ready, let's finish up here. Come on back to standing on both knees. Let's come down to our belly to do an airplane pose. So come on down, walk your hands forward, come down to your belly. Oh, that feels good. Arms down by your sides, palms face down. <sighs> Spread your legs a little bit to whatever's comfortable. Shoulders away from the ears, chin, nose on the center of your mat. <sighs> Let all the air out of your lungs. And when you're ready, as you inhale, lift on up, gaze down your nose, lift your legs on up, lift your arms on up, palms face down, reach toward the back of your room. Reach, lift, hold, breathe, hold. Come on down, palms touch, legs come down. Do it again, lift. As you inhale, lift, as you exhale, lower. Inhale, lift, exhale, lower. Maybe just the arms lift. Maybe just the legs lift. Maybe you put it all together, lift and lower. One more time, lift and lower. Come on down. Now bend your elbows, place your hands underneath your collarbones. As you're ready, press on up, gaze down your nose. Soften in your glutes, create space in your hips. Press on up to your knees, then come to seated. 
As you come to seated, send your legs long, toes high to the sky, lift your arms up. Breathe, <sighs> exhale, reach forward, reach forward, reach forward, gaze forward. Parallel arms, reach forward, gaze forward, feel the goodness in your low back. Bring your hands to the insides or outsides of your ankles or to your calves, hug your elbows in, then send your gaze to your knees. Hang out here for a little bit. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, fold. Think of your belly hollowing out as best you can. Close your eyes and imagine. Remember, it begins with imagining. You've got to just kind of think it'll happen. Think of your forehead coming closer to your knees. Inhale, lengthen, exhale. Think of your forehead touching your knees. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. One more big fold. Finish up, shoulders over your hips, spread your legs nice and wide. We did this earlier in a standing position when we did our horse and our Pasarita Padahastasana. Oh, say that real fast. Send your toes up to the sky. Blocks are in between your legs, lengthen up. <sighs> Exhale, hinge forward. Let this be. Your blocks can be at any height. Maybe you bring your forearms to your blocks. Maybe you, you know, decrease the height of your blocks or increase the height of your blocks. Do what feels good. A little bend in your knees might feel right. Breathe. <sighs> Breathe. <sighs> Finish. If you want to stay there longer, go for it. <laughs> but I'm going to come out of this wide-legged forward fold. It's bringing my legs together. Bring your eye shade and your towel up toward the top of your mat. That's a good sign, right? It means we're going to be on our back for the rest of the practice. Grab your strap, too. All right, so let's recline. Come all the way down to recline. Let's do a reclined figure four. So bend your knees. Let's do a bridge pose first. Bend your knees, soles of your feet are on your mat, arms down by your sides. Press into your strong feet and lift your hips on up to the sky. It just feels right for me, maybe for you too, to wiggle your shoulder blades closer to your spine. Lift your hips even higher. Press your hands down into your mat. Breathe. Now practice lowering your spine one vertebra at a time. Bring them on down until your tailbone comes down last. All right, now we're going to do a sp uh, reclined figure four. Lift your right leg up. Place the outside of your right ankle on the top of your left thigh. Push the inner right thigh open. Breathe here. Breathe. How does it feel? Now you could use your towel or you could use your strap. It's up to you. Lift the left leg up. Lift the left leg up. Ooh, feel the stretch in your right glutes. Lift the left knee toward the chest. You can take your hands, interlace your fingers behind your left thigh. Hug it in. You could use the towel to make your arms a little bit longer. Breathe. How does it feel? You don't want to stress. You don't want to strain. You just want it to feel good. It's a good deep stretch. You know, you've got to like what you do. The only reason you stick with something is because you like it, right? So think, I get to do my yoga, not I have to do my yoga. Enjoy the depth of the stretch. Perhaps take the interlaced fingers, place them underneath the knee. So, oh, you're getting even farther away. Hug the knee in, drive the outside of the right knee away. <sighs> Breathe. Bring the left foot down, bring the right foot down. Let's do it on the other side. I hope you like that pose. I like that one a lot. All right, it's kind of like our half pigeon that we'll do tomorrow. Lift your left leg up. Outside of the left ankle, onto the right thigh. Maybe today you take your two hands and push your inner left thigh open. Breathe. Maybe you decide, I want to lift my right leg up. Ooh, use that strong core and lift the right knee toward the chest. You can keep it right here. And remember those variations we took on the other side? Same thing. Use your hands or your towel. And you can rape, drape the towel behind your right knee. And hug it on in. Hug it in until it feels super great. It's always, in this one, I always just want to go farther, farther, farther. Breathe. Another option, take it a little more intensely, is to bring that towel or the interlaced fingers underneath your right knee and hug it in. Stretch it out. As you hug the right knee in, remember the outside of the left knee goes toward the front of your room. Breathe. Breathe. When you're ready, finish up. Right foot comes down, left foot comes down. Find your strap real quick. Bring your right foot underneath in, uh, the center of the right foot into the strap. Left leg goes long, heel drives to the bottom of the room. Let this right leg open up to the right and then open up to the left using your strap. 
Breathe back and forth, creating like a half circle arc over your body with the strap holding onto the leg. Breathe. Let's finish. Leg comes up. Let's do the easy way. Bring the left leg up to meet the right, then bring the right foot down. So your legs are like in the shape of the letter L. Strap, hold onto it tightly. <sighs> Soften in your shoulders, and then start to let the left leg open to both sides. Using the strap, lift, breathe. <sighs> couple of arcs over your body. You're waking up your hips. Finish up. Left leg is up tight to the sky. Right leg goes up to meet it. Even that's a little core workout. Draw your toes towards your shins. Give the strap a nice pull. Little bend in your knees might feel good. Just enjoy this. Enjoy it. And I mean enjoy it. Have fun. All right. Release the strap. Keep your legs up high to the sky, but bend your knees. Left hand under your left knee, right hand under your right knee. Oh my goodness, you have so much mobility in your hips. Rock from side to side. If you like, capture the inner thighs or capture your heels. Drive your knees towards your armpits. Send one leg high to the sky. You did a nice long lunge. You can do this today. One leg straightens and goes high to the sky as you hold onto the heel. And the other leg straightens while the other leg bends. Happy baby pose. And you know, if you just can't capture your heels, maybe you hold onto your calves, maybe you hold your inner thighs and you're just moving the legs, bending the knees, waking the knees up, keeping the synovial fluid going in the knees so you can go for a good walk after your yoga. Finish up, draw the knees together at the midline, hug the knees in really super tight with your elbows hugged in tightly by your sides as well. Exhale, peel on up, give your knees a kiss and then send your legs long. Time for final Shavasana. Legs long, heels toward the bottom of your mat. Cover your eyes with your eye shade or your towel. Arms down by your sides. Oh, breathe. Big breath in. <sighs> Big breath out. Soften the area between the eyebrows. Breathe. Get back in touch with all that you got, your mind, your body, your soul, your spirit. It all works together to create who you are. Big breath in. Big breath out. Stay longer if you like. This is your yoga. Maybe you've got the remote control right near your blocks and you pick it up and you hit mute. As you lie here longer, getting in touch with your breath during this time of conscious relaxation. If it's time to conclude your happy hour, let's wiggle our fingers and our toes, circle the wrists and the ankles, reach high overhead, take a good big stretch. Oh, your shoulders can do it. Your hips can feel it. Oh, it feels good. Point the toes. And on an exhale, bend your elbows and roll into a fetal position onto one side or the other. Low arms bicep is a pillow for your head. Let your head really rest heavily there. Top shoulder is down and away from the ears. Take a big breath in. And a big breath out. Savor your breath. Take a nice big cycle of breath again. Take a nice big cycle. Just take in goodness. And breathe out that which doesn't serve you. Stress, worry, tension. You don't want it. Let it go. As you're ready, maybe keep your eyes closed, using your hands or not. You decide, press on up to a comfortable seated position, whatever is comfortable for you today. And every day is different, right? Hands to prayer center, lengthen up through the crown of your head, shoulders over your hips, crown of the head up to the sky, chin slightly tucked, ears slightly back. Breathe, breathe, just breathe. When you're ready, slightly blink your eyes open. You did it. 
you did an hour-long yoga practice. I hope it served you well. I hope you made it serve you well. I hope you feel better in your body. We took a stress number in the beginning. Let's do it again. What, what is your stress number now? I'm sure it's gone down. Your yoga does that for you. It just makes everything feel better as you find peace. So take little steps today. Each day, take little steps toward your goal, whatever that goal is, because those little steps are what add up that get you to your goal. See you on your mats tomorrow for yet another yoga practice. Tell your friends about us. Our yoga is free for anybody and everybody, and it's just fun. I hope you enjoy. From me to you, much love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. See you on your mats tomorrow. Love you guys. You rocked it. See you tomorrow. Don't forget, come back. Right? What do you think? Good girl. Good girl. Bonnie's totally chill, and that's a good way to be. <laughs> Bye. Good girl. You want to go for a walk, you want? The power of believing in what's possible is the same power to make things change for the better in your life. And your yoga, I hope, is doing that for you. Stick with it. Tell your friends about us. Tell them. Tell them to watch us on YouTube and Facebook. It'll make them much better friends. It'll make them feel better in their bodies, in their minds, and in their hearts. Yoga is good for you, and you know it. Our yoga is free for anybody and everybody. Tell them to check us out. If you'd like to support our broadcast, check out our website. It's www.316yoga.com. Stick with it. Believe in yourself. And see you on your mats today.